I'm a little bit nervous. I'm very, very excited, but I have to say this is going to be a big one. We are casting off the lines, leaving the dock, and we are sailing this boat almost by ourselves for the first time. It's been like two years since I've actually sailed a boat, any boat. So for us to be like on this ginormous catamaran, uh, we've got 90 miles to go today and uh, it's going to be a big day. <sighs> I'm excited. We've got two crew on board. Very, very excited to have them here. <laughs> I had planned to do a proper introduction for Nikki and Jason that day, but unfortunately Jason woke up ill and spent the entire day like this. So you get a voiceover instead. Of course, Nikki and Jason from Gone With The Winds need no real introduction. Ever since Nick and I spent a week on Curiosity back in 2019, we had hoped to one day return the favour. So now, with Ruby Rose 2 finally ready, we had a narrow window of opportunity for Nikki and Jason to come out and stay with us before they had to be in China for the build of their new boat. With only a few days' notice, they booked their transport to Pattaya with no idea that we're hoping to leave the next morning for a two-day run down to Koh Samui. Luckily, being the adventurous spirits that they are, they were totally up for it. And as you'll see in the coming episodes, we really leaned on their experience and expertise as we learned how to manage this new big catamaran. All right, let's go sailing. All right, this is the first time I'm opening the sail bag, so I don't actually even know if I'm tall enough. What I've noticed about this boat is that um, it's really handy if you are like six foot. If you're five foot two, then things get a little bit more complicated. <laughs> So what's the plan? Um, spring out. We're gonna spring out. Yeah. Okay. I want I want the ability to spring to get the nose out. If we if you deal with the lions. Yeah. And then I'll deal with the props. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't understand. Oh, that's a spring. Okay. Now I have to like rethink about how to do all the things that I used to just do. Take the top one off so the boat drifts back. I'll hold it on the prop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna have to get on the boat unless Jason can. All right. Yeah, we need to work out how to do it. And just remember, you've got all the time in the world. <laughs> no rush. <laughs> Thanks, Nikki. Okay, so this needs to come back. So this line is going back to that plate. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It has to be on the on the on the plate on the dock. It has to be on the dock. So like you can then. I'm not going to be able to undo a figure of eight. Sorry, can you explain to me what it is you want? I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. I don't think that this is going to work and I don't know why. All right, we're off. You're off. I apologize, but we're not in this boat together. I know it's inappropriate time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what, what are you thinking right now? <laughs> I'm thinking that I'm very out of practice, that I haven't like been sailing in two years and I just wasn't confident. Like these mooring lines are really big and heavy and I'm not used to the way that the boat moves and I'm not used to the weight of the boat and it says it's the same um, weight as Ruby Rose, but it certainly doesn't feel like it. Um, so yeah, I don't know, Nick and I are going to have to have a little debrief and think about how this is going to work because um, obviously springing off is something we're going to have to do quite a lot, so we need to work out a system. Listen, as, as far as I'm concerned, if I haven't scratched off the boat, then, um, sorry, you're going to bleep that out, then it's a success. Can you give us a slack, mate? Can you do? I know what I need you to do. Yeah. I'm going to get the boat head to wind. Yeah. And I want you on that side, so that we're both looking at the sails, yeah? At least that bit was easy. <laughs> Where are we going? So that's a course of yeah. 226, right? I just love that I can get the shot. It's nice having a camera woman on board. <laughs> They're called guests and friends. <laughs> I don't feel great about that whole situation. Yeah, but you did it. I know, I know, but we need to have a little chit chat about how we can do that thing better. Listen to me, what we'll do is. Well, when we get back to a dock, we'll practice it without the end of the boat moving. Yeah, so you know how to get the stuff on and off. Yeah. Well, you're not worried about like right. Now, could we all be in the uh, look out for crab pots? Yes. Oh, shit. I missed that. Well, we all did. I was staring like straight ahead and I couldn't really see it. 
What we don't need is a rope around the pole. Anyway. It's all gonna be okay. Some, uh, research. I think we're just gonna pull through the third reefing line because it's just floating around out here. The reefing lines are a little bit too fast and loose. Clutch off, clutch off. Do you reckon it's just the weight of the sail on it? It's all jammed up in the sail bag. Up, up. Got it. It's the throwable line from the horseshoe boy, it just was, wasn't stowed properly. So we're just motoring along at the moment, we're doing about six and a half knots I think. And the wind speed is actually pretty light, which is why we're just motoring into it. We've only got about ten knots of true wind speed, but yeah, it's coming from exactly the direction that we're trying to head in. So, you know, we thought about uh, putting the sails up and bearing away a little and actually getting a sailing angle, but I think that because the winds are so light, our VMG would not be any better. And at this point, the anchorage is, uh, I'm not quite sure how far away it is now, but it was 90 miles away from Pattaya. So we wouldn't be getting in before dark. If we, if we did that, we need to try and keep our BMG up. And I think even at this speed, we're probably looking at eight o'clock um, arrival time. So good thing that the bay we're anchoring in tonight is apparently fairly easy to enter even at night time. And it's a big shallow bay and we'll just drop the anchor, have something to eat, go to sleep start again tomorrow. I mean it's not the ideal first sail. Thankfully we've actually been out a few times already with Phil and Mark and uh, we've had you know a taste of what this boat can do and how amazing she can be under sail. This is not one of those sails. This is like engine on, get to where we're trying to get to. The boat's kind of bucking and heaving a little bit but um, and slamming. <laughs> There's quite a bit of salt water coming over the bows as you can see from like the say of that window. But we're all hanging in, in there. We're all uh, holding up okay, I think. Jason has uh, resurrected himself, which is nice. Um, hopefully he's feeling better soon. Nikki is like, the motion doesn't bother her in the slightest. And Nick is doing okay. And I'm all right. Cross our fingers and hope that the wind shifts around a little bit today. It is supposed to shift around, but it's still gonna remain in that southwest quadrant. So I don't know if we're actually going to get much of a point of sale, but we can live in hope, I guess. Stay tuned. Right on the edge. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather get in, like with the motor setting, get in doing right, and anchor for our first time. They like to park the wind swinging around. We've got 25 degrees apparent, nine knots over the ground, and we're going to be with We will get in in time for cold beer. Oh, that's all that matters. Yeah. Yeah. Your priorities yeah. The uh, handy little graph on our um, BNG display is telling me that the wind is starting to come around to the south. Not sure if that's going to make much of a difference to us at the moment. Our <laughs> apparent wind angle is two degrees, so it would have to come around at least another 30 degrees for us to be able to put the sails up and actually get a point of sail, fingers crossed. What I'm hoping actually at this point is that the wind just drops off a little bit. I mean, it's only eight knots, it's still motor into it and it'd be nice to get a little bit of extra speed. We're doing about, yeah, about seven and a half knots speed over ground. So actually that's not too bad. The rest of us are like stationary at best. Nick and Jason are both semi-recumbent. I'm like barely hanging in there. And Nikki is in the galley making hummus <laughs> for lunch for everyone because that's the kind of person that she is. She's an absolute champ. It's a bit of a slog at this point, not quite what I wanted our first sail to be like, but I am very glad that we are underway at least and that, you know, we're making progress towards Kotao. So that is, you know, it's worth it. it it'll be worth it. Take that off with your foot. 
half. Great first motor sale. Um, as I've explained, uh, we need to do our first anchoring. We'd like to do our first anchoring in daylight. So we've got the engine on to give us two extra knots. That uh, means theoretically our ETA is about 6.30 p.m. That's half an hour to circle, find a spot to anchor and get the boat dug in. And I would say transits to make sure that we've never used this anchor before. Yeah. So, uh, Saka. But we're also using um, eight millimeter chain, right. not the use. So basically there's a, I'm not sure how much scope we're going to need and how quickly it beds in, blah, 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 the old Katana reaction stuff, but it's a protected bay. So, and it's like winds tonight, but I still think that if we're in eight meters of water, I will go with five. So 40 meters of anchor chain out, make sure she's dug in. There's a good bridle system on there yeah. and we'll get that all. So yeah, if we can do that before dark, that basically means we can sit down 7.30, it gives us two or three hours to shower, eat, have a beer, decompress, have a chat, and then get to bed in time for maybe like an early start tomorrow. Okay, this is so much better. I think the wind has actually picked up, but I don't know, there's just something about having the sails up, just those few extra degrees, and uh, the motion of the boat is a lot more comfortable. We've also got a little bit of extra speed on now, which is always very satisfying. And uh, yeah, suddenly it's a beautiful bloody day. Sun's out, the sea's blue. I'm tempted to go forward and sit on the dolphin seat, but I think that the minute I do that, a big wave will come and I'll get absolutely drenched. We've got about 50 miles to run. Hopefully a bit less than that now, actually. Maybe about 45 miles to run. Oh, there it goes. Okay, holding on. Oh, glad I didn't go forward. There you go, that's the money shot right there. Nikki, we were just saying that you have literally filmed about 80% of today's episode. You, yeah, you've made us lunch, you've looked after Jason, you've just done the dishes and cleaned the galley. And uh, I don't know what other jobs we can get you to do, but you're practically running the show at this point. So thank thanks, you. Nikki. Thanks, thank you. <laughs> it has been fun being on board and being able to be the person filming instead of being on camera all the time and being able to kind of help them capture this moment, right? Because you're so focused on the boat, you've waited so long, this is gonna be us soon. And I can already anticipate what that's gonna be like. So I feel like it's such a privilege for us to be able to kind of experience it before we experience it. So I feel like we're learning a lot and kind of taking and absorbing all of this. So it feels like a treat to me and I'm happy to be crew and help them on their first couple of days so um yeah this is what crew does you do dishes and you cook and all those things in exchange for being able to have the pleasure of being out here on this beautiful yacht right of course i just wanted to take 15 seconds to invite you to join our patron community so we've got upcoming events on river rose 2 this boat the annapolis boat show and we really want you to join us our patrons have access to our Discord server and our WhatsApp groups where the conversations are always popping. <laughs> and there's loads of other benefits. And if that appeals to you, there's a link in the description down below. Power. <laughs> so join us over on Patreon. We'd love to see you. <laughs> I mean, oh. oh, look, it's pretty overwhelming. Like we're just being in charge of the boat, but we got it off the top without messing it up. We got the sails up thus far without messing them up. So yeah, I just, if we can get anchored without anything else, I'll be very happy. Then I'm going to sit down with a beer and then pull that as a result. Yeah, I think that was there before, like it's hard to process the length of time that we've waited for this boat. You know, we've waited such a long time and now we're finally underway. And it's just like a really big set of emotions to kind of work through and I think we we're saying before to each other that it's going to take us a while to like settle in to cruising life and um, yeah just kind of decompress and relax and just like get into a routine and it's going to take a while for this boat to feel like our home. So right now it just feels like a really really lovely boat that we happen to be on you know so it's going to take a while but you know we we're going to be spending the next few months in hotel, through some food, campaign, and like, I cannot think of a more perfect place to be chilling out, just easing ourselves back into it. It's gonna be amazing. 
Richmond. I'm very excited about that. Today's been a bit of a slog, but the reward will be worth it. Yeah. 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 Hope you guys are hanging in there. I mean, you're fine. Jason, not so much. <laughs> Jason, not so much. It's not raining outside. I'm quite as hot as I was a few hours ago. Literally getting waves of the coach route and we're still like a solid you know, about 30 miles away and our engines are making well one of our engines is making weird noise and can't get a point of sale. I don't know. Boat speed is slowed down, it's 4.30 in the afternoon and it's gonna get dark in three hours and Well, there's that. Glad you guys could be with us <laughs> for this experience. It sounds better. It sounds better. Yeah. I think it just got air on water. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, you heard that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's only like a bit of line. It's like, it's called the top and it just hits the hole. It's definitely calmer. It's more calm. Yes, it's definitely calmer. Do you want to get some uh, dinner on the go? I'll, I'll do dinner. I'm hungry. <laughs> wow. It's been quite the day. It is almost seven o'clock. The sunset's quite late here. It doesn't get dark till, you know, kind of 10 past seven. I think we're probably a solid 10 miles away. Um, we're doing about seven and a half knots. So we've got probably at least, you know, an hour and a quarter before we're dropping anchor. But at least the sea state has calmed down now and is a lot more comfortable than it was. Um, yeah, it was a bit of a wild ride for a while there. Jason has finally, uh, <laughs> is finally in an upright position and he's had a rough day. It's certainly going to be an after dark arrival, which is less than ideal uh, when we haven't even used the anchor before. Is that a problem? Yeah. That's a problem. No, the strap's broken. Please? Yeah. Take the helm, I'm Yeah, okay. What do you need? Anything? Anything uh, No, I just want to take the helm. Okay. How's it looking? It definitely hurts. Holding. Holding. You good? I think so. I think we're all good. Oh. Woohoo! Hallelujah, we made it. <laughs> Here you will go. Oh my goodness. It's been a long day. Dirty and salty, but we made it. We did. Yeah, and Good I am feeling okay. Jason's come to life. That's feeling true. okay. At uh, long last. At the yes. very end. We'll see how the toilet treats me tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's an early start again tomorrow, oh, Jason. Oh, very great. Oh, you get to do it all. Hopefully yeah. tomorrow you guys will be. No, you're perky enough, Nikki. Jason, hopefully tomorrow you'll be a little bit perky. Yeah, I'm so. <laughs> oh man, that's annoying. I'll just to uh, take my torch and have a little look. Have a look. In hell. <laughs> That's exactly how we are. So bridal comes from where? I don't know. Ask Jason. It's on the corners here. How much is it? Oh, D ring. Uh, thank you, everybody. That was uh, 30 minutes longer than we needed it to be, but <laughs> we've all good. we've all deserved a life. I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> you probably didn't catch what you just said but uh we're in thailand now so yeah it's all legal baby. it's all legal that's right oh that's nice oh well done guys oh. well done you made it through the day 
Oh, and nobody even lost their shit. I'm so proud. I'm so proud of you, Toys Goals. No, you know, I've been. I've been I lost oh, all my shit. I lost <laughs> all my <laughs> shit. So, Set you up yeah. for that one. You <laughs> did. It was a hot week too late, <laughs> and none way. of us picked it up. <laughs> We've had a long day. Yeah. Yeah, come sailing, I said. Yeah. <laughs> come sailing with us, they said. I know, I know. <laughs> We're trying to return the favor from like many, many years ago, but I think that you guys got more than you bargained for tomorrow. I'm not going to say it's going to be better, no, but yeah, let's, no we're, we're going to hope for better things tomorrow. Uh, it wasn't bad, this is good. Yeah, it takes a lot to rattle you there, Nikki. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. I don't think that this is going to work, and I don't know why. I know why. I don't normally do this, but I just wanted to quickly jump in there because I am editing this episode right now. Sorry, a long tail boat's going past. We're in a beautiful anchorage in Koh Phangan. And I just wanted to clarify with you why this was totally incorrect and where it all went wrong and why we made such a basic mistake because we, and anyone who's been watching our channel for any length of time probably knows this. We used to spring Ruby Rose off a dock all the time. The fact that we set the spring up wrong and we no one noticed. I didn't notice, Nikki didn't notice. Nick didn't notice Jason was ill, so he had no idea what was going on, is one of those situations where it's such an obvious mistake, but when you are distracted by something else, i.e. a camera in your face or having to film or thinking about the fact that you're trying to maneuver this boat that we're completely brand new to in very close quarters, get it off the dock for the very first time. Nick had a billion things running through his head and I think that he just trusted me to work out the spring line. And the fact that he could see that I was doing it wrong and he didn't pick up on where it had all gone wrong is really testament to the fact that we were both feeling a bit stressed that morning. So what we should have done was to take a line from the aft cleat on the boat forward to a cleat on the dock, which was about midships, loop it around that cleat on the dock and then bring that line back to the cleat on the boat, the aft cleat on the boat and secure it on the boat. Sorry, what are we talking about? I just explained to Nick where it all went horribly wrong with the springing off at the dock and he was like, no, 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 I'm going to explain it to you using like a diagram and props and everything. And then what happened? Then I was wrong. <laughs> then I was 100% wrong, and you were right, and I shall have a tattoo, not that my next tattoo. Hey, you're always right. Well, I wasn't right on the day. I was extremely wrong on the day. This is the front of the boat, mm -hmm. and this is the dock. We did something really weird, where we went from the mid cleat back to a cleat on the dock, and then we attached to the back to cleat. Yeah, that's why it didn't spring out. What we should have done is go from... We'd be on the dock. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Well, it probably wouldn't have been that far forward anyway, but it would have been like this. Well, what's the problem then? And then, as we reversed, we would have got, gone nice and close to the dock. And then, at that point, we would, we would have sprung out the bow. And how do you achieve your lines? Because it's all held onto the boat. This, this goes around a cleat here, just loops around and... Uh, yeah. Yeah. To be fair, Nick literally woke up from his nap and I was like, Nick, <laughs> I've just realised where it all went horribly wrong. And he was like, what? We'll know for next time. Or will we? Or will we? <laughs> uh, we have a small problem. So our uh, water maker, but it's not putting it into the tank. Oh, hey, shit! salt water, which is a problem. This is um, issue 995? Yeah, something like that. It's, I was just saying to Nikki, like, I feel like there's been a baptism of fire, like getting back into boat life. <laughs> and that, officer, is how I ended up covered, my covered in content adhesive. <laughs> that is so much better. Why didn't we do that to begin with? That was perfect. <laughs> that was perfect, and you know it was wrong. Even you were like.